Hey everyone, it's Carly and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my November wrap up, so the books that I read in November. And this month I read a total of 12 fucking books. Who am I? In total I read 5 physical books and 7 audiobooks. I was kind of on my grind this month, I'm not gonna flex on y'all, but I kind of was. So the first book that I read this month was a book that I was trying to finish in October. Well actually I started in October. Actually, I originally started it in like March and then I DNF'd it and then I tried it again in October and then I finished it in November. <laughs> and that is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I gave this between a 3.5 and a 4 out of 5 stars. It was okay. Basically, it's about this girl named Makani. Basically, she comes to live with her, her mother, her mother, her grandmother in Nebraska and shit happens. She meets this good friend group and this cute guy who is very like mysterious, kind of like an e-boy I kind of feel like he gives me the vibes of. And murders start to take place throughout the town and they kind of are just like, who did it, trying to figure it out. And people are starting to believe that it's Ollie, the cute boy that she's like in love with, whatever. And people are starting to think it's him because he's so quiet and he's mysterious and stuff like that. But it was good. It's just a plot twist of who did the murders and stuff like that. Just was not surprising and he wasn't really like an important character or they weren't an important character my bad totally gave it away honestly don't really recommend this book as much as i wish i could i just i wish it was better but sadly it wasn't i could have left this book dnf honestly i mean the, the only i guess good part too is that the mur murders are pretty gruesome is that bad to say. This next book is a book that started my love for these two new authors that I love so much. They're very popular I want to say because they deserve it and that is The Wife Between Us by Gura Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen and oh my god I love this book so much. I can't even like explain how much I love these two authors now and why I love them. It's just like their writing is chef's kiss times ten. It's just, it's so phenom phenomenal, and I listened to this on audio. Just, I loved every second of it. I did not want to stop listening to it. I almost forgot what this book was about, because I read this so begin in the beginning of the month, and I read their second book, and love that one even more. But this one is about a wife, and her husband is now dating somebody new. And they say, like, you're assuming that this is a book about a jealous ex-wife, but basically, there's one big plot twist and I can't give it away, I can't talk about can't talk about it at all because it gives away the entire book. Just know that this book was amazing and you definitely should go into this blindly because I went into this not really knowing much. I thought the synopsis of My Lovely Wife was the synopsis of this book. So go into it blindly as I did as an idiot. So that's all I have to say. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I love this book so much and I am so excited to read anything these authors right now. Next book is my favorite book of the year. I will say that now. This book is my favorite book of the year. I love this so much and let's just an anonymous girl by Gur Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen again yes oh my god five out of five stars love this so much if it was possible to give a 10 out of 10 I would so freaking do that this is about a wife and she is like a psych professor professor and she gives a what is it called a morality a study on morality and ethics to women and they kind of come in and like take the test on the computers and just answer all these questions that kind of really dig deep into your head. There's this, our main character, I'm like forgetting all this, her name is Jessica. A professor basically starts to schedule more studies with her because she likes learning things about her because it's helping her towards a situation the professor's in right now. And I can't discuss it again because it just kind of gives everything away. Just know that this book is fucking insane. Plot twist, like the plot twist you think you know, I said this about both their books both the books you think you know what the book is about and then a plot twist happens and then it's like completely like your mind's back to like okay i don't know obviously what i'm talking about and i thought that i knew something but i don't and basically these authors are amazing and they deserve all the hype they get because i loved every second of this book i did not want to put it down i loved it so much and again this is my favorite book of the year and i am not even disappointed in my choices next is a book that i was not really planning on picking up i just kind of picked it up out, out of the whim off the whim whatever it's called Beautiful Bastard by Kristen Lauren. Yeah, okay, so I have some thoughts, and I wrote it down here because I had some thoughts. First off, I gave this a four out of five stars. Did it deserve that much of a high rating? Not really. I mean, it was a really just smutty, stupid romance novel that really is just like mindless reading. I this girl named Chloe Mills, and she has a badass boss, mean boss, dicky boss, whatever you want to call him, 
Bennett Ryan, which I hate his name. I wish it was Ryan Bennett because I always call him Ryan Bennett instead of Bennett Ryan. It's just like so confusing. It's like a last name for a first name and first name for a last name. I hate it. I'm sorry. I'm going on a tangent. Obviously, this is her boss and they have like that hate to love relationship or very much hate aggressiveness toward each other. And then randomly, it's just like page three, they just start hooking up. And I'm just like, okay, when did that happen? It's just, it was like out of nowhere. And then it like, it tries to build a plot from that point on to say, oh, I had I liked you. I wanted to bang your brains out for a while now. It's I just feel like it's like a Fifty Shades of Grey, but a better and more like relaxed version of it. If you could say that, it would I just say it's better than Fifty Shades of Grey. I was gonna say that now. I did like this. It definitely was a guilty pleasure read. I I will con probably continue on the series. I'm not gonna say probably. I'm just gonna say um I might continue on the series. I mean, it was I was a very fast paced read. It was a guilty pleasure. Did I like it a lot more at different parts? Yes. But did I also hate it at a lot of parts? Yes. So I did write some things down. I said lacks plot, no communication, which the characters lack communication throughout the entire book from beginning to end. Again, all just sex. Yeah, we knew that. Bennett tried to take control over Chloe a lot. I didn't like his possessive controlling side over trying to control her body and her saying he has control over my body. You, you have a mind of your own. Why are you gonna let some guy take control of your body? I'm sorry. Not as in like he's taking control of her body over more of just her saying he's taking control of my body just by giving a look at me. Like, I'm sorry, but I have a brain and I would not even really do that. Even if I was like really into a guy, I wouldn't, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm just different. And then I also said the good way outweighs the bad towards the end and then the ending saved it. Basically the ending saved the book. That's, that's probably why I gave it a four out of five stars. I don't really remember it. All I know is that I was kind of swooning Anyway, moving on. And after that, I did an audiobook of Beautiful Bitch by Christina Lauren. I gave that one a 2.5 slash a 3 out of 5 stars. That was, this is like a filler. Honestly, that book was not even needed. I'm just going to say that. Plain, upfront, whatever. That book was not really needed. It just kind of felt like it had no purpose. It was just a continuation on of Chloe and Bennett, obviously. And I just kind of feel like it was just a book to be put out and published just to have a book to be put out and published. But it didn't, you didn't really need to read it. You definitely don't need to read it to continue on the series because the second book, it doesn't even focus on Chloe and Bennett anymore. It focuses on their, their friend Sarah and Max, I want to say. So skip that one if you are into the series. Next is another disappointing read of this month. I had a few disappointing reads. It was My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I still think about this book a lot just because of how uncomfortable this book made me. So this book I talked about a lot, thinking that this is what the, my, the Wife Between Us was about. It's about a guy who basically brings home women for his wife to kill. And then throughout the book, the plot completely like changes. It does like a 180 and it turns into them copycatting murderers, a murderer that took place in their town and it starts killing women like he did K getting killing women that he would have killed to make it seem like he was still killing people but in reality he wasn't even killing people it was just it was very confusing and it kind of just it seemed like she should have just made that the plot and the point of the book from the beginning instead of what they did i don't know it was just really confusing and i listened to it on audiobook and the narration really made me uncomfortable because it was a guy that narrated for the women and it sounded like he was a character of a bob's burgers or big mouth and it made me kind of uncomfortable and I just I didn't like it. it it was really lackluster I just no the next book is definitely a one that I definitely do cherish a lot in my heart now and I didn't think that I would but I can't believe I I kind of want to change my rating to a five out of five stars I was definitely on the fence about giving us a 4.5 or a five out of five stars and I'm looking at my notes and I gave it a 4.5 but I think I'm gonna give it a five that's no exit by Taylor Adams and when I say that I really enjoyed this book and that it made me a bit terrified, it, it did. I listened to this on an audiobook and I had an amazing time. There was no way that I was gonna be reading this small of font with a physical read. You're funny. But listen, listen, listen. I love this book so much, it was amazing. It's about a girl, her name is Darby, she's a college student, she's on her way in the middle of a snowstorm to see her very sick mother who has pancreatic cancer, I wanna say, and her car is basically not making it through the storm and so she pulls over to a rest stop and she goes in, she meets all the people that are there. There's like four people, a girl, a guy, and then two guys. And then she just like goes out to the car, out to like the, where the cars are parked to try and get like cell reception on her phone. And she notices that there's a girl kidnapped in one of the vans. So she goes through trying to figure out who's who did this. 
I don't know how to explain that. She starts to confine in somebody there and it's a complete plot twist after that because that person isn't who they say they are and it's not what you're thinking. Actually, it probably is what you're thinking, but it's so crazy what happens and the big plot twist of this book and it just kind of like catches you off guard because I remember when I when I listened to the plot twist of the book, my mouth, because I talked about this in my reading vlog, I will link it up below in the cards. When I was listening to this on my way home from work the one day, I remember when the plot twist happened, my mouth was like, when I was driving home. I was just like, so shell shocked, whatever. I just, I love this book so much. And I honestly do think about this book a lot now, more than I thought I would. I kind of already want to reread it. But I'm not going to because I just read that. Like it's just crazy. They till like to the complete ending. This is like a book that would really make you anxious if you have like really a bad anxiety. I feel like because especially if you have like a fear of being kidnapped and stuff like that. This is like this very portrays that and just like the main character and her fighting to survive was amazing. And I just I like the main character a lot. And usually I hate the main characters, but I really really enjoyed this book. It was power to the women that's what i'm gonna say power to the women next one is a very much surprising one this is an audiobook as well and i read serpent and dove yeah so serpent and dove is about a witch named lou and they're not allowed to kill witches where they're from because they can't sacrifice them because i think that's like illegal and so she's like but first off they don't know that she's a witch and i just realized now that she's put into an arranged marriage but I thought they got put into a arranged marriage because they knew that she was a witch, but they don't know that she's a witch yet to like the very end. And so they were kind of put into like an arranged marriage and then it kind of goes from like a hate to love relationship between a Shashar, French something. And he has to basically like protect her. He's like gave her his word that he will protect her. And it goes from like a hate to love relationship. And I loved it. I really did enjoy it. Excuse me. I really did love the whole hate to love. I think they did it really great. I like the characters. They were very likable. Just the two I really only paid attention to the two characters that were in the book. There was just so many other characters and just so many different names that I really had a hard time following through. But I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. If I could change it now, I think I would give it a 4.75. I know it's a bit extreme, but I'm just going to change it to like a 4.75. It was really good. I... I know there's a bunch of different reviews about this book and like people are not liking it and people liking it but I feel like if you listen to this book and read it at the same time you would really have a good easy time following through but if you just go into it it's listening to an audiobook and you're not like used to listening to fantasy then you're gonna have a hard time because like me I don't really listen to fantasy I don't really read fantasy so when I went to this listening to a fantasy on audiobook I had a hard time a lot of the time following through and I would get lost miss my place in my book at all the time so but it was good I can't complain now we're getting towards the ending of my books. The next one I read was Happy Hustle High, Volume 4. I started this manga series of back in the summertime, I want to say. I read Volume 1, 2, and 3 a couple months ago, and then I gave it a break because I was kind of getting bored of it because I read them all very fast, one after another. And then this one I gave, what did I give it? I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was just okay. It wasn't really needed, I guess. I don't know. I just didn't really care for this one as much as the other ones. Like, the first one I think I really liked, the second one I didn't, or the second one I did really like, first one was okay, third one was no, this one was meh, and the last one I really liked. This is basically as a continuation on to the entire manga series, so I can't really, like, explain it. It's just about Hanabi and her being a secretary and her finding love with this guy that really hates girls and is awkward with girls and then they like fall in love and then she has like a high school or not high school like a childhood friend that comes back and is trying to like take her from her current boyfriend it's just like a whole mess it's just, it's just weird but i mean i liked the overall manga series but this one it was just kind of bleh. my most anticipated read of the year i finally finished and that was <gasps> city of bows like i said claire oh i loved this book Mwah, i love it so <laughs> y'all know i started this book back in March, May maybe, I took forever to read this bad boy and I don't know why. It was just my first, technically this was my first fantasy and I finally finished it and I'm so happy. I gave it a five out of five stars. We already knew that I was going to do that from the beginning to end. We already knew that when I first started it. I cannot wait to continue on the series. I don't want to talk too much about this book because I have talked so much about this book in my last reading vlog, which again, I will link that one up in the cards as well. I love this book so much. If you don't know what this is about, I'd be really surprised. I'll give you like a rundown. It's about shadow hunters and witches and vampires, blah, 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 werewolves, all that kind of stuff. So it's about this girl named Clary. She is our main character. She does not know that she is 
part shadow hunter, I guess you could say. He goes to like this club and witnesses a murder, but she can only see the murder happening because these people are only visible to her eye because they're shadow hunters and she's a shadow hunter. After she finds out that she sees that, stuff starts to happen with her mom and her mom goes missing and then she starts to confine in these new shadow hunters and they start taking her in and telling her and kind of giving her like a new life and kind of like teaching her the shadow hunter world and what's actually going on in her life and it's just like a whole thing it's, it's one thing after another like i swear it is and then her best friend simon who is a mundane gets involved with it a mundane is somebody that's just literally a human I really liked it from the beginning to end. The ending kind of threw me off guard, but I talked to people about it. I talked to Jocelyn Reeds on my Twitter because I was very confused. I needed someone that read this book already to get my final thoughts of this book out because I was very confused. She told me to read the ending of book number two and start of book number three, I think, and that it'll kind of explain and clear things up for me, which I'm really hoping for because I was didn't like the ending that much. It kind of almost made me want to throw the book away. But I'm not going to do that because I love this book and I love the characters so much and this book has a special place in my heart and I love, I just love it. I love it so much I can just, I can, I'll shout it from the rooftops. I love this book so much. Next book that I read is my second to last book that I read this month and it was another audiobook and it was The Great Gatsby and I read that for the second time this year. It's my favorite classic. Second time around I didn't really like it as much. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I didn't like it as much as the first time because I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars the first time. I want to say back in March. I don't know. Everything happened back in March. I did like it. It's just I kind of spaced out listening to an audiobook. It's my first time listening to it on audiobook and my first time listening to a classic on audiobook. So it's kind of confusing and hard to pay attention to when I was playing Sims. So I did like physically reading it the first time and again I already knew what was going to happen in the book so I kind of wasn't really paying attention to it because I wasn't dying to know what was going to happen because I, again I already read it this last the beginning of the year so i already knew it was gonna happen it was just okay it was just nice to like i guess relive it even though i don't really remember it besides the ending i love the ending it's just it gets me every time it's just like oh yeah i forgot that happened it was just it's great it's great it's a great time and then the last book that i read this month was happy hustle high volume 5 so i officially completed the manga series of happy hustle high and i'm actually kind of oh it was upside down i'm actually kind of sad that i finished this but i gave this one a five out of five stars i really love this this definitely wrapped up the entire series it People had different opinions apparently on Goodreads. I saw people did not like the ending of this book and how this book wrapped up everything, but I felt like it wrapped up everything perfectly and it didn't really leave anything unsaid. But Hanami, again, she's just kind of very annoying in this book. I think it was this one that I was reading or it was the fourth one that she was very annoying. I did like the character that's steamy sometimes. It wasn't like a super steamy book, but like it was a cute book and I like the characters a lot. Very cute and I'm gonna miss it. Holy wowza. I just finished my wrap up for November, yay. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was an amazing reading month. I finally kicked my big old bad reading slump that I had for six months. <laughs> That's so sad. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a big like, subscribe down below, join the family, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.